Welcome to another episode of the Cooking Odyssey. Today we are going to make a warm vegetable salad with feta cream and olive vinaigrette, a free-range rooster with herb butter and broccoli mass, and for a dessert, cinnamon biscotti with sea salt. A beautiful place named Pilos is what inspired me for today's recipes. Mountains, beaches, and olive groves makes Pilos a hidden gem of the Peloponnese. Historically known under its Italian name Navarino, Pilos has evidence of continuous human presence since prehistoric times. Built amphitheatrically, beginning at the foot of Agios Nicolaos Hill, Pilos is beautiful and full of charm. Life mostly revolves around the central square with beautiful buildings and centuries-old plant trees. The square is named the Platea των Trion Navarchon, Three Admiral Square after the three leaders of the Battle of Navarino, which liberated Peloponnesus. The central point of Pylos is the home of the great Olympic champion Kostas Tsikliteras, winner of four medals in the standing long and high jumps. Pylos' bay is sat in by the long island of Sphacteria which was famous for the defeat and capture of the Spartans in the Battle of Pylos during the Peloponnesian War. It's hard to realize that this Grand Bay and Harbor has seen such bloody battles. Leaving the harbour behind me, I made my way to the fortress of Neocastro. The castle was built in 1573 by the Turks to control the southern entrance to the Bay of Navarino. Behind me is the wall of the Ottoman castle called Neocastro. The castle became a prison in 1864 and was even used during World War II when it was occupied by the Italians. Today, Neocastro stands proudly above Pilos, overlooking Pilos Bay and Sfacteria Island, with its long history both young and old. So, for the warm vegetable salad we will need onion, mushrooms, zucchini, red pepper, cherry tomatoes, an eggplant, carrot, olive paste, balsamic vinegar, feta cheese, and some spearmint leaves. Now, roughly cut all the vegetables. Try to cut all your vegetables in different shapes so they cook evenly. Mushrooms are very soft, so I will put them whole. Red pepper. Carrot. 
I want my carrots in very thin sticks. The whole idea is to have cooked vegetables, but at the same time, crispy. Tomatoes in. And last but not least, my eggplant. Olive oil. Some salt. Pepper. Give it a toss. And in the oven at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. Now, I will make my feta cream. I will mash it up a little bit. Cream and some pepper. Okay, this is ready. Some olive paste, one tablespoon of vinegar and four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now mix it up. I think my vegetables are ready. I'm gonna get them and I'm ready to serve. If you want, you can cook them a little bit more, but I like them crispy. A little bit of olive in the some of the feta cream, some mint leaves, every single bite of this recipe is a surprise. Let's go back to Pilos. This leg of my journey brings me to a green olive oil manufacturing plant that was started by a group of friends in 2013. With a commitment to the environment, the Agropoli facilities were designed to harness nature's natural resources to help run its operations. In the manufacturing plant, olives are crushed to release their oils. Olive oil is one of the main staples in Greek cooking. Philostratos, who is Agropolis? Well, uh, Agropolis uh, was created from a group of young people who share the same dream. A dream to create traditional uh, Greek products like uh, extra virgin olive oil and uh, table olives. Uh, we focus on uh, quality, top service and uh, modern design. Agropolis, uh, we are proud to say that uh, is one of the green companies in our field uh, of activity. The factory was built from the beginning uh, with respect to the environment. For example, we have a photovoltaic installation that contributes to the electricity of the facility. Also, we use uh, the sun for uh, lighting purposes during the day. We use the rainwater for uh, watering the plants, uh, for cleaning the facility. This is a, a small profile of the company. Is there a story behind the name Thalea? Yes, there is a story behind the name Thalea. Um, we were inspired uh, by uh, one of the nine uh, muses of the Greek uh, mythology, Thalia. Thalia is uh, the daughter of Jupiter and the Evrioni, and uh, she was the goddess of uh, nature, fertility and prosperity, characteristics that they link with our products. Thalia, the name of our brand, rhymes with uh, Olea, the Latin name of uh, olives. 
Is your olive oil from one type of olive? Mainly we use the uh, Koroneiki variety, one of the most famous varieties in Greece. It is famous for uh, its uh, rich taste and uh, aroma. It is cultivated in the area and uh, the result of the high quality has to do with the altitude uh, of the region and the traditional methods that are used by the farmers here. How many acres of olive groves do you have? We have 200 acres of olive groves that cultivate on our own. Uh, we use integrated farming uh, methods in order to ensure that at the end of the harvest we will have the best uh, result uh, as possible. What other products besides olive oil do you have? Besides olive oil, uh, we have the table olives, two varieties, Kalamata olives and black olives. Kalamata olives is considered to be the king of olives, famous for its oval shape, deep purple color, uh, rich flavor, and uh, the black olives, uh, round black olives, naturally fermented, very juicy olive, very fruity. From these two varieties of olives, we produce also the olive spreads, and uh, in the future we are planning to introduce also different varieties of olives in our uh, product range. What grade of olive oil do you manufacture? Uh, we produce uh, only extra virgin olive oil and uh, we are happy to say that uh, we are blessed that we have uh, our olive meal here at the region which is famous for the top quality of uh, olive oil with very low acidity which is due to the altitude, the traditional methods that are used from the farmers here. We also produce organic extra virgin olive oil. We are uh, certified uh, as an organic producer. Apart from the Greek market, uh, we export in Europe, mainly North Europe, and now we're going to be in the US. In our future plans is uh, to open the market of uh, South America and also the Emirates. So we are back. Free range chicken, to be precise, rooster, with broccoli mass and herbs. We will need a breast of rooster, in Greece we call it kokoras, butter, garlic, broccoli, onion, mustard, and some herbs. I'm gonna start by making my herb butter, some rosemary, some thyme, fresh organo. I'm gonna chop everything. That goes in, a globe of garlic. some lemon zest. Salt and black pepper. I'm gonna mix everything up. Okay, I'm gonna get my rooster. I'm gonna lift skin. cover again. This technique will give me crispy skin, some moisture to the flesh and of course a beautiful aroma. Olive oil, a little bit because I have the butter and goes in. Skin down. I lower the heat, move the breast on the side. Now the butter is melting and I'm pouring it back on the breast. When it's brown and crispy, I'm flipping it on the other side. And now I'm gonna finish the cooking process in the oven at 350 degrees for 25 minutes. While my rooster is in the oven, I'll make my broccoli mass. So, broccoli goes into the boiling water. Some sea salt. I'll chop an onion. Let me check if it's ready. You don't wanna cook it too much, because you don't want to lose all the flavor, the color, and the nutrition. Onion in a bowl. 
some mustard, olive oil, salt, some pepper. I'm getting my broccoli out. And while it's still hot, into the bowl. Give it a good mix. A touch of lemon juice. I'm gonna give it some more flavor. And we are ready to serve. Some fresh oregano and a little bit of olive oil. Perfect. Now let's go back to pillows. Exploring pillows and walking by the seaside made me a bit hungry, so I have a couple of recipes that I want to try. For starters, I'm going to make a striped siba ceviche and Greek koslo. Striped sibas, orange, lemon, chives, olive oil, cabbage, green apple, mint, mayonnaise and Greek yogurt, salt and pepper are all that is needed for the ceviche and koslo thinly sliced fish fillets are topped with orange and lemon zest. The juice of the lemon and orange will cook the fish while marinating. Olive oil and season with salt and pepper. For the coslo, thinly sliced cabbage is seasoned with sea salt. Some julienne green apple and chopped mint are added along with the yogurt, mayonnaise and fresh pepper. Plate and top with the ceviche and a touch more olive oil. For the Greek orzo carbonara, I need onion, white wine, heavy cream, eggs, turmeric, graviera cheese, calamari, fresh basil, olives, dried salami and orzo. Finely diced onion and salami. It's sauteed in olive oil until translucent. Deglaze with the white wine and let simmer. In a small bowl, beat the eggs and heavy cream for the sauce and set aside. Add a half cup of water and the turmeric to the onions and bring to a boil. Zest and finely chop the lemon and basil and set aside. Add the orzo which has been parboiled to the onion and salami. Add the juice of half a lemon, cheese, egg sauce, season with pepper and let rest. In a large saute pan, add the olive oil and the calamari. Season with salt and let cook. Add the remainder of the lemon zest and basil and juice of half a lemon. As my journey in Pilos is coming to an end, I have one more place to visit. Hidden behind sand dunes lies one of the most fascinating geological formations of its kind. Best known for its omega shape, Voidokilia Beach is believed to be the place mentioned in Homer's Odyssey where Telemachos, son of Odysseus and Penelope, was greeted by King Nestor as he was searching for his father. Boidokilia Beach lies beneath the old Frankish castle Paleocastro and the cave of King Nestor, who according to legend 
used the cave as a haven for his casting. The name Voidokilia means cow's belly. But whether you see an omega or the shape of a cow's belly, what you'll see most is its amazing beauty. The beauty of Greece is that you never know what you'll find on your journey or where you might leave your mark. And now let's make some cookies. We will need butter, sugar, water, one egg, flour, powdered sugar, and some cinnamon, and a little bit of sea salt. All the ingredients into a big bowl, except the water and the sugar. We mix them. And now I'm gonna work it with my hands, but not too much because I want them to be crumbly. It should look like this. Plastic wrap. And now I'm trying to shape it. Now, this goes in the refrigerator for two hours to set. So now my dough is ready. I just took the half of it. The other half is in the refrigerator to use it another time. So I will coat it with a little bit of water. and some sugar. I will cut it in small pieces. And I'm gonna bake my cookies in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. So my cookies are ready. The combination of the caramelized sugar on the outside and the sea salt gives it a toffee flavor. Thank you for watching. See you next week on another episode of The Cooking Odyssey. Join us next week as we visit the Peloponnese Riviera. Learn how to make an easy olive bread and satisfy your sweet tooth with an orange tart.